Hi there, this is Dana. In this quick tutorial, you'll notice that it's a different format this time. It's going to be some slides for you, because this time you're going to have to do some math. I know, most people think they hate math, but trust me, this is amazing and you're going to be completely blown away and you're never going to have to need another app ever again for this. I'm going to be teaching you how to calculate how much fabric you're going to need for your cross stitch projects. I see this question come up all the time in cross stitch groups. People cannot figure it out. And yes, there are apps out there that can figure this out for you. But honestly, wouldn't you like to know how to do this yourself so you don't have to rely on an app, especially if you're in a fabric store and you see some amazing fabric and you know your pattern or you're going to buy a pattern at the same time and you don't happen to have your app with you or whatever, this way you can figure this out on your own and you're going to look like a massive smarty pants and it's amazing and you're going to love this. So trust me, we're not doing calculus here. You're going to be fine. So what you're going to need for this is uh, if you've got fabric or a pattern you want to use as a sample and sort of follow along with this, go for it. If not, you can reference this later. Uh, you're also obviously going to need a calculator of some sort. I'm not expecting you to do this in your head. So for most people, that's going to be their smartphone, or you can even do this on your computer. Most computers have a built-in calculator as well. Or you can use an old-fashioned calculator if you happen to have one floating around the house. Go for it. Whatever floats your boat, go for it. So, First up, you're going to have to know, most stitchers know this already, but some uh, don't quite understand what thread count actually means. So what thread count of your fabric refers to is the number of threads per inch. So for cross stitch, this means how many stitches per inch you're going to have. There's a sort of a disclaimer about that, and I will get to that later on. So for example, here you can see a lovely picture of some Ada fabric. Ada is quite commonly used uh, either by beginner stitchers or people who have some like eyesight issues. And lots of people just prefer Ada as well because the holes are uh, much more distinct than they are in uh, linen and even weave. No judgment here. If you like using Ada, power to you. Go for it. Use what you like. So for example, you can see that this is 14 count eight. Uh, Ada fabric. You can see that I've uh, put a little symbol on there. Just sort of, if you actually count, you'll see that there's 14 of those little Ada blocks. So that represents one inch of stitching. So in one inch of stitching, if you're measuring it with a ruler on your fabric, you're going to get 14 stitches out of that. And that's going over each individual block as one stitch. So the thread count of the fabric will always be the same vertically and horizontally. Uh, especially for cross stitch. I think there is some fabric out there that is slightly different hor horizontally and vertically, but you don't use that for cross stitch because then your stitches are going to end up taller or longer than they should. You want your cross stitches to be square. So it doesn't matter which way you measure your fabric, your thread count's going to be the same either direction. So obviously you're going to need to know what thread count your fabric is. So for most people they know when they buy their fabric, they know what fabric they're buying. But sometimes if you've bought some fabric ages ago, or somebody gave it to you and you don't know, or you've lost a label on it, sometimes fabric has like a little, either a little sticker on it with um, the thread count of it, or like a, it comes in like a plastic um, wrapper type thing, uh, and it's got the thread count on it. So if you've lost that or you don't know, you can literally just get out an, a ruler or a measuring tape, whatever, and measure out one inch and then count how many stitches or how many of those threads are going across. If you're using linen and even weave, you're going to have to count quite carefully because it's usually higher thread counts, but it is going to be for one inch, you're counting how many threads across that is, or tall, whichever floats your boat. It's going to be the same either way. So once you've figured that out, so in this example, we're going to be assuming it's 14 count, like that Ada picture I showed you. So you figured out your thread count, so I want you to write that down on your piece of paper. So in this case, it'll be 14 count. Your second step is going to be looking at your pattern and seeing how many stitches high and wide it is. So this depends on the designer and where you buy your patterns from. Quite often it's actually printed either on the cover of the pattern, on the listing online, or it'll be um, like maybe on the back cover of the pattern. Uh, and sometimes it's not there and you actually have to count the grid squares on the pattern. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So this is an example of one of my pattern covers. This is one of the newer ones. Um, you can see underneath the title, it says 65 stitches wide and 85 stitches high. And I've also actually done the calculation for you as well. So the stitched area of this particular pattern is four and a half inches wide 
by six inches high on 14 count. And I'm gonna explain exactly how I got that measurement. So on some patterns, it will have the stitch count and the, the, the stitched area measurement for you right there. So you don't really have to do as much calculation. For some, it will just say the number of stitches because they don't want to assume what thread count of fabric you're going to be using. Uh, some people prefer stitching on a very high thread count because you get um, a lot more stitching in a smaller area. So you can also see this is uh, some images from my website. The top image is from my website from the actual pattern listing for the same pattern. You can see again I've listed the pattern size at 65 stitches wide and 85 stitches high. And it's also four and a half inches wide by six inches high on 14 inch count. So this is what I do on all of my patterns. I have them on the listing and I also have them on the pattern cover. However, if you have a pattern, like I've seen a few, and I don't know why they do this, but I've seen a few that don't actually have this information on the pattern itself. It happens for whatever reason, whether it's the software the designer's using, whatever. But anyway, if you look at the actual pattern itself, you can see I've got a little bit of the grid here of the actual pattern. So my newer patterns, uh, the grid starts at zero in the center where the little black triangle is in the center. I know it's probably a little small for you to see in the video with the numbers, but anyway, if you look at the actual printed pattern or the digital version, you can see this much more clearly. So in this case, you would see that there's 33 stitches on the left side of the center mark and there's 32 stitches on the right side. So that adds up to the 65 stitches wide of actual stitched area. So you do the same thing vertically and horizontally. Some patterns will start at zero in the top left corner of the pattern when they're counting out the grid squares. Some like mine start in the center. It very much depends on the software that people are using. Either way, it's the same thing. You can calculate the actual amount of stitches by looking at either the numbers or counting the darker grid lines. Uh, most cross stitch patterns, they have a darker grid line every 10 stitches vertically and horizontally. Okay, so that's how you calculate the number of stitches in case your pattern doesn't tell you. So I want you to write that down on your piece of paper too. So you've got your thread count, in this case it's 14, and your stitch count. So I'm gonna give you an example here. So this is how you do the calculation and we're gonna go through this, so don't worry. So you're gonna divide the number of stitches by the thread count of the fabric. And I'm gonna give you an example. So no panicking, nobody's allowed to panic. If you need to go get yourself a glass of wine or something, that's totally cool, but you're not allowed to panic. All right, so for example, if your pattern is 140 stitches wide, so that's left to right, your pattern is 140 stitches wide and you're using 14 count fabric, the calculation is 140 stitches divided by the thread count, which is 14, so that would equal 10. So your stitched area of your pattern is 10 inches wide. So I'll go over that again. So you take your number of stitches that's on your pattern or that you calculated, and you divide that by your thread count. And that equals how many stitches, or sorry, how many inches your stitched area will be. I'm gonna do another one. So this is the same pattern. So if your pattern is 210 stitches high, so top to bottom, and you're using the same 14 count fabric. The calculation is your stitches, so 210 stitches divided by 14 your fabric equals 15 inches. So the stitch area of your pattern will be 15 inches high. So it's always your stitches divided by your fabric equals the area. I know it sounds really complicated, but once you actually do this once or twice, you're gonna be like, oh, that's actually not as hard as I thought. But this is why I want you to write this stuff down and like actually practice. Like if you have some patterns around, play with this, have a little practice because it is actually really good practice for you to figure this out. So for this particular example, we said it was 140 stitches wide. So that equals 10 inches wide of stitched area. And we said it was gonna be 210 inches or 210 stitches tall. So that's 15 inches high. So that's the stitched area. This is where your stitching is going to cover on your fabric. So obviously there's one more little step. You're not quite done yet. Almost, so close, hang on. Step four is you have to add in your margin for finishing and framing. So this means 
your blank fabric on all the sides. You need blank fabric, you need enough margin, because if you don't have enough margin, you're not gonna be able to finish your project properly, you're not gonna be able to say stretch it for framing, you're not gonna be able to put it in a hoop properly for framing, or whatever you're doing with it, and you're gonna get, w and also that margin prevents you, like if you go a little bit off center when you start your stitching project, that margin gives you some leeway, so you don't get too close to the edge of your fabric and run out of fabric. I've seen that so many times in cross stitch groups where people either turn their fabric the wrong way around, so it's supposed to be tall and skinny and they start the other way around so they run out of fabric or they start off center or they forgot to add in a margin when they're calculating their fabric. It's super sad because there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. You can't really add in fabric on the edge. You can try, but it's always going to be visible where that seam is. So as I said, adding in two to three inches on all sides will give you enough room for finishing and framing. You really, really don't want to stitch too close to the edge of your fabric. And like, I don't even uh, finish the edge of my fabric. Like some people will stitch the edge of their fabric or use masking tape or painter's tape, whatever, and then cut it off later. I wouldn't recommend um, using masking tape, use painter's tape, because then you can just peel it off and it doesn't leave a residue on your fabric. You need that extra fabric to make it easier to handle when you're framing and finishing. So as per our example, the stitched area we calculated was 10 inches wide and 15 inches high. So let's say, because it is a bigger project, let's say let's add in three extra inches all around and that will give us enough space for finishing and framing. So the calculations would be for the width, so three inches on the left plus your 10 inch wide stitched area plus three inches on the right that's 16 inches wide total. So that's your total fabric width, that's what you would cut. For the height, same thing. Three inches on the top, plus your 15 inches high, plus three inches on the bottom, that equals 21 inches high total. So for the pattern that's 140 stitches wide, 210 stitches tall, on 14 count fabric, you're going to need a piece of fabric that's 16 inches wide, and 21 inches high. That includes all of your margins and your stitched area. That is what you would cut. You would need a f piece of fabric at least 16 inches wide and 21 inches high for that exact pattern on that thread count of fabric. Which is good because sometimes you have a pattern and you're not sure like whether this random piece of fabric you have left over is going to be big enough. This is how you calculate that. This is how you calculate the minimum size fabric you're going to need. So again, to find your stitched area, you divide the number of stitches, so that's on your pattern or whether you counted the actual grid squares, you divide the number of stitches by the fabric thread count. You do that for the width and the height, and you're gonna write all this down on a piece of paper. Just find a little scrap of paper, whatever, write it all down. And then you add in your two to three inches on all sides for your margin, or you might cry later. I say might, you, you will cry later. It's sad. <laughs> I don't want to see anybody cry. It's supposed to be a fun hobby. So here's a little slide. You can take a screenshot of this. You can do whatever. You can write this down. I'll uh, put this in the accompanying blog post as well. So you can um, you can just save this blog post or whatever. So the calculation is your stitched area is the number of stitches. So this is on the pattern. The number of stitches divided by the fabric thread count. Width and height. Same thing and then adding in your two to three inches. Again, you might cry, and we don't want that. So if you're stitching over two on high thread count linen, so remember I was talking about for higher thread counts, this can be a little special. So for a lot of people on higher thread count fabrics like linens and even weaves, they will stitch over two. That means instead of stitching over one hole in the fabric, you're, you're doing your, your cross over two holes. There's a, a quite a few reasons for doing this, but basically it, it um, like linen and even weave is, is a really pretty fabric and it allows you to do different things like um, some specialty stitches, like fractional stitches easier than if you used Ada. There's a bunch of different reasons. I have a lot of other videos about stitching over one and over two, things like that. But basically if you're going to be stitching over two, like let's say on 28 count fabric, which is quite a common fabric to use, 
then you're going to be assuming with your calculations that you're stitching over 14 count because stitching over 2 on 28 count is exactly the same amount of stitches as stitching over 1 on 14 count. I know this might sound a little um, confusing, but trust me. <laughs> just, just remember if you're going to be stitching over 2, whatever your thread count is, whether it's 28, whether it's 32, whether it's 36, whatever, before you start doing all of these calculations, divide that fabric thread count in two, divide it in half, that's the number you're going to be using for all of your calculations. And there you go! You did it! You did it without an app. You can do it in your own head. You can do it in the fabric store. Just to need a piece of paper and a calculator. It's magical. So I really, really hope this helps you. If you have any questions, please do feel free to ask in the comments below. I'm happy to help you out. Um, like I said, you can get apps for this. I, off the top of my head, I can't remember any. I think one might be Yarn Tree, but I'm not sure. And apps change all the time anyway. There are apps for this, but it is. Um, I think it's a good skill for stitchers to learn just because it makes you more aware of um, how the thread counts work with your sizing like if say if you have uh, a piece of fabric that's maybe a little bit too small you, you can be like okay well maybe I can just make it the margin just a little bit smaller or things like that so you you get a much better sense of uh, what patterns you can do on which fabrics and I really hope that helps and I hope you have a great day happy stitching